Hey there, it's Ashley Krieger here. Welcome to Crateful Art, where you and I get to celebrate the Crateful life. I have a surprise today. Me. My daughter Katie and I are going to show you how to paint our 2D2 using watercolors. Let's get started! You will need watercolor paper, watercolor pencil, paint brushes, watercolor paint, black, red, and blue, palette, water, and a paper towel. Step 1. Draw R2-D2. First we need to draw R2-D2. Find a favorite reference picture that you can use to either guide you or to trace. If tracing, you can use a window or a light box to help you. I'm going to use a homemade light box to trace the general outline and features of R2-D2. You can make a simple light box with a frame, four cups, and a light that you can place underneath the frame. Find a reference photo you like of R2-D2. Size it, print it, and place it on the light box under your watercolor paper. When the light comes from behind our reference photo, we can see the lines we need to draw more clearly onto our watercolor paper. Make sure to center R2-D2 in the middle of your paper, giving yourself some white space at the top and plenty of room on the bottom for the drips. Using your watercolor pencil, draw the top half of R2-D2 it is okay that you don't draw every single line, and it may be hard to see every line anyway. If you need help seeing lines, print another reference photo to look at. As you get lower on your R2-D2, you can start choosing what lines you want and what you don't want. Don't trace the whole thing, just the top portion and some of the middle section. We are learning a watercolor technique and not how to draw R2-D2 for this lesson, so it's okay to trace it. Step 2. Paint blue. Give yourself some blue watercolor paint, a primary blue or a cobalt blue on your palette. Use your small flat top brush. The flat top will give you better lines and sharper edges when we paint lines and shapes. Start with the top of the R2-D2. Use the flat edge against your pencil marks to make sure you stay in the lines as you paint the top. As long as you use the edge against your lines, you will stay in the lines. Look at your reference photo to see what shapes the top looks like. Paint around the center circle at the top. Remember to use the edges of your brush to stay within the lines. If you don't stay in the line and you don't like it, you can easily erase with your brush by getting off all the paint on your brush. Then add water to it. Then go over the sections you want to erase. Take your paper towel and lift off the paint. Do that until you see no more paint where you don't want it. Keep going around adding blue to the sections of the R2-D2 that are blue. Add more blue to your brush if you want places darker and more water to your brush if you want places lighter. Wherever there is water your paint will go. As long as you leave the white areas dry, color won't get on them. Be sure to keep your arm and hand off of the wet sections or they smear. Step 3. Paint black and gray. Next, let's move on to the black and gray areas. These will be the shadows and dark features on R2-D2. For a gray, just add a small amount of water to your palette and a small amount of black. Mix and then add the color to your brush. If you put straight black on your brush, you will get black, not gray. In the first area you paint, where you want black, just dip your brush right into the black paint. Start with the circles on R2. Leave some area white for a reflection of light. If you paint it all black accidentally, let it dry. Then, after it is dry, grab your brush with water on it and paint the area you want white. It will still look black until you take your paper towel and dab it into the wet area you just made. It should lift off the black pigment. You can do it again to get a whiter spot. See how the white area makes the circle look like it's realistic? Next is the easy part. Add gray paint to the sides of R2-D2. Look at your reference photo. Where are the gray areas? Don't forget when painting lines to use the edge of your brush. I'm going to help Katie turn her brush in her hands. Sometimes that is all we need to do and then keep practicing our brush strokes side to side, top to bottom, keeping inside the lines we drew. Don't worry about finishing the bottom. That's next and it's the funnest part. 
Step 4. Add drips and splashes. Part of the fun and appeal of this painting of R2-D2 are the drips. The trick to painting drips is that they follow the water. So if you don't add water to where you want the drip to go, when you lift your paper to get it to drip, the water stays contained to the wet area. So, you actually need to paint where you want your drips to go. Give them a little nudge. The drips start from an area you've already painted, right? So you grab the area you want to drip, paint with just water where you want the drip to go, then add the same color as the area already painted, and put some of that color at the top of the drip, and there it goes! Put a lot of water and pigment on your brush for splash marks and use some force flicking it to get the pigment off. If you want splashes in specific areas, you have to add the water splash first and then pigment second. It just works better that way sometimes. Have fun and be creative. Make sure all your paint is dry before you move on to the next step. Step 5. Paint red. Make sure all the paint is dry before adding the red to R2-D2's light, or it will bleed into all the other colors below as it runs down. Fill in the circle, and then I guided my red with my brush so my color stayed bright, and I didn't want it to go too far down. You make your drip the way you like it. If you need to fix it, just get it wet, pick up the pigment with your paper towel, let it dry, and make your red drip again. You may have to fix your blue underneath if you do that. It feels great to complete a project. Thank you, Katie, for doing it with me. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just make sure you have fun doing it. When you're happy with your R2-D2, sign your masterpiece. Thanks for following along and painting with me. Remember, if you keep practicing, you will keep getting better. Be sure to head on over to createfullart.com and subscribe to my newsletter for some more awesome art lessons and projects just like this one. Thanks for commenting, liking, and subscribing. Leave me a comment. What did you think about this lesson? I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.